talk, right? And of course, the first question was, why is it called Top Talks? Well, this is the first part of it. Why is it called Top Talks? Well, Henry Taub is our leader. He's our direction. He's the one that started ADP, and he was a visionary, right? He saw the ability to start a business in a hole and built it into what is now around 70,000 people. Huge business, lots of people involved. The second part of this is to do with TED Talks. Does anyone know um, what the uh, TED Talks are about? Anybody? I see it on the internet. Go on. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. What else? Come on, cheat. It's at the bottom. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Education. So, TED Talks is a number of talks that were held around the country, and they're really interesting talks. If ever you get an opportunity to go to one, I would. If you see them in Augusta, they're called TEDx because they are the extension of the TED Talks, right? They're the remote ones that are done. Um, the thing I want you to look at there is thinkers, doers, and idea makers. Don't you love that? Thinkers, doers, and idea makers. I love that term. Um, and you know what? All of you are thinkers, doers, and idea makers, right? Yes? Yes. That's what you all do. Because, you know, all of us are here because we feel that we could become a leader one day. We're strong. We're directed. We're mostly eight personalities. We have that ability, right? Okay. So let's see if you can figure out why these people are important. Start with this one. A face only a mother could love. <laughs> right? Do you know who he is? I mean, who he is, though. Led us through World War II, right? Come on, we're in the South. Who is it? <laughs> good looking guy, right? So you can see why people would follow him. He's good looking anyway. What about that? No education, went to, went to university, but dumped it. Didn't want to stay there. True? How about this? This is a view of what I feel I look like <laughs> and what I really look like. <laughs> now remember, this guy, five foot five, five foot six. Short guy, right? Don't have to be tall, don't have to be good looking, as we can see. <laughs> Look at that, Genghis Khan, a marauder. Now, look at the two pictures again, what people saw him as, as a person, and who he really was. Very different views. Anybody? Don't have to be big and muscular, right? So what do these people have in common? Leaders. They're leaders. Well, why are they leaders? What, what makes them a leader? What makes you want to follow them? I mean, visionaries. they're visionaries. That's a very good point. Managers and leaders. Big difference. If you don't know the difference, managers manage people. That's what they do. Right? Leaders lead. Managers manage. And I can't see from this distance of that screen. How many of you have looked or have been with a manager that has encouraged you, right? What sort of feeling was that? When you had a manager that pushed you forward, that wanted you to succeed. Empowering, it's a great word. What about people who've had bad managers? Come on, yeah. And, and what was the difference, do you know? Can you remember the difference between what was a bad manager? Why were they bad to you? Micromanaged. That's part of it. Part of the issue here is not always, I'm going to turn this off. It's annoying. I'm, I'm loud enough anyway. So part of the issue here is not about, you know, what we do or how we accomplish something. It's about what encouragement we're given. How we're given encouragement and who gives it to us, right? So all of us can be positive and all of, all of us can be move, moving ahead. But if we're not in the right position, and if people aren't acknowledging what we're doing, we get frustrated and we stop. We don't want to do it anymore, right? The other thing is, I notice a lot of people have bad managers teaching us. We're mentored by the wrong people. So we're mentored in the wrong way. 
Yes? yes? You must know that. You must have seen that, right? And then we take on those bad habits. Have you ever taken on a bad habit? Yes. When I was in school, um, I bullied kids. Sorry to say. You know why? Because kids, thanks a lot. Because kids, in my school, it was a private school, and guess what? All through the school, every class bullied the class underneath them. So it's the norm. It's only when I got to the fourth, fifth grade, I think yours is the eighth or ninth grade, right? <laughs> Sorry, my, mine's fourth or fifth, I have to translate it in my head. That's when I realized I didn't have to be that person, right? And I stopped. I stopped doing it. So it's really important to look at who you're using as your mentor, who you're using that's making the difference to you. This is the difference fundamentally between the manager and the leader. A manager tells you what to do, right? They have a direction, they say, do this. This is what I want to get out of you, this is how I want you to do it. A leader doesn't do that. They don't need staff, they need a strategy, yeah? And by the way, they're not telling you anything. They're listening to you and asking you what direction you want to go. They're encouraging you to step up. Scott Williams, and if you ever get a chance, go watch him. He's a great speaker. Talks about these differences between a manager and a leader, and it's really interesting. Managers love stability. Do you know what that means? They love SOPs, <laughs> right? Hey, guys, you did this. This is how you should be doing it. Leaders, they like to change things up. And I, and I like the thought of Genghis Khan sitting there going, okay, where's the SOP? We have to take this fort. It's four feet deep. I want to see the SOP on it. <laughs> he didn't do that. He said, take the fort. Right? Right. Okay. Avoid conflict. Managers don't want conflict. Follow the rules. Yes? Here it is. Now, in some cases, you have to. If we do payroll, what do we do? Follow the rules. Right? Mm -hmm. But a good leader understands that to make a change, you need friction. To move something causes friction. How many times have you gone up and said something new to your manager, your boss, or somebody else, and they've gone, no, I don't want to do this. And you go, but it makes perfect sense. And they go, no, I don't want to do this. Right? You should push your head. Planning the details. Managers plan details, right? They plan each thing that we're going to do. Hey, next week we're going to do this, this, and this. Here's the schedule. Do it like this. What do we see? What do we see for leaders? Anybody? Strategy, Strategy right? Take the fort. Don't worry about all the details. That's somebody else's problem. Take the fort, right? Direction. Managers follow existing paths. Here's the rules, here's the direction, here's what we're going to do. Leaders don't do that. They step out, they go in a different direction. Don't we see that today with dealer services? For anybody in here who thinks dealer services change is something you know, terrible, you're wrong. It's fantastic. You just don't understand why, but it's fantastic. It's a tremendous change for ADP. Uh, managers tend to take credit. Not all of them, because I know a lot of managers that don't do that and are learning to become good leaders. Yes? We know some of them here, right? <laughs> They're sitting next to you, don't say anything. <laughs> um, we make decisions, right? Managers make decisions. Is that what you want? Or you want them to facilitate a decision? Yes? How many times do I have people come into my office, and some of my team are in here, and they go, blah, 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 blah. And the first thing I say to them is, well, what do you think? <laughs> and they think, well, you're the manager. You should be making that decision. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm teaching you to make that decision. True? True? Wouldn't you rather have the respect of someone coming to you and asking you that question, rather than trying to just always follow what? <laughs> and we're afraid. I, I get it. We're all, all afraid. Anybody in here who's had a child, when they had their first child, they were scared. We didn't know what to do. You didn't come with a manual that said this is what you do. 
When you have your second child, you just don't care anymore. <laughs> the first one, you care a lot about, right? That's what you do. This is a really important one. Managers tell you about a vision, a direction. What does it say for leaders? They sell it to you, right? And, and I saw a great program one day about Apple. And they say, Apple is brilliant. They don't make anything different to anyone else. True? True. They make the same product as everyone else. They hire from the same pool of people as everybody else. They get the same people in. You know what the difference is? They sold you a vision of what you should look like with an Apple phone. So you can i show you. <laughs> I'm cool. Right? Um, this was done actually even before that between IBM and Apple. They were fighting it out. But this goes on all the time. Biggest thing, managers are transactional. That's what they do. They transact things. Leaders are? Transformational. We all know that, right? We all understand the difference. John Maxwell, if you get a chance to watch his videos, great guy, five levels of leadership, all right? And I want, I'm going to try and do this fairly quick because I've only got eight minutes left. So let's start with the first one. What's the first level of leadership? It's getting a title. Hey, look, I'm a manager, right? <laughs> Follow me. I know where I'm going, Yes? But most of the people that will follow you are people that are following you because of your position. They don't trust you, they don't know you, but they'll follow you because you have a title. Right? Now, it's interesting to note this. One of the things that he spoke about in his book was you can always pick out people who, whose manager they don't trust. At 5 o'clock they leave. Yeah. Right? And by the way, at 10 to 5, they go for a pee. Because <laughs> right? they don't want to waste their time going for a pee afterwards. They want to do it on company time. Are we allowed to say that? We'll pick that piece out. The point being, they follow you because they want to follow the title. That's all they want to follow. That's the only thing that they're really interested in. So what's number two? Relationships. What, I know you're reading permission. I want you to tell me what number two is. Building a relationship. Building a relationship, right? Because now you know me. I know you. Now we have a relationship. Now that relationship doesn't change because we're who we are. It gets better, right? I understand you more. You have children. Sometimes children get sick. I understand that. Bless you. Right? These things happen. But we build a rapport. So there's a different dynamic there. True? All right. Number three. Which means? Lead by example. There is nothing stronger in the world than leading by example. How many of you know a manager who tells you to do something and then goes home? <laughs> right? You lead by example. You're the leader. You step at the front. That's why, you know, your captains, your corporals, everybody's at the front. Because you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step out. You guys are going to follow me because I stepped out. What's next? The people around you. So what does that mean? What does development mean? How many of you are developed? Work in progress. Work in progress. <laughs> Absolutely. Work in progress. <laughs> but you develop because... Because your manager sees something in you. And then somebody encourages you and sees something in you, what do you do? You suck it up, right? Mm -hmm. Why are you all here today? Because we want to suck it up. We want to suck it up. <laughs> we want to learn something. We want to know how to get that next step, how to be out there, right? Um, i put you on the spot now. We were talking about coming and talking at meetings. And talking is all about being an SME, right? Everyone in here is an SME. Everyone in here has a talent that I don't have. I have a talent that you may not have, but every single person in here has a talent that I don't have, right? Because all of us are unique. Now, some of us may not have found the niche that we want to be in, 
we haven't found that sweet spot. Yeah? It happens. Keep looking. Keep looking. Look for the manager that's going to mentor you into a direction that you want to be in. Be excited about that. ADP is a great company. Is that not true? Yes. We have a huge retention rate. It's fabulous. How many of you really understand that? How many of you look at it and go, this is a really great company to work for? I've worked for many companies. And I'll tell you something else. We see a lot of people from other companies wanting to come here. Think about how lucky we are. We're already here. <laughs> The last one, and this is a, a consequence of developing people, right? Maxwell talked about the consequences of developing people. And that is that they'll want to follow you. They want to listen to what you have to say. Not because they have to, not because you have a position, not because you have a title, but because you have something that's worth listening to, right? And let me tell you something. This comes down also to your own family. I'm going to tell you a story in a minute about what I want you to do for homework. Did we tell you there was homework? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, if you want to understand a little bit more about yourself, look at this. Julian Rotter in 1966 did an instrument. You can look this up afterwards. You don't need to write it down. But let me just tell you something about uh, Rotter. The instrument that they wrote was to do with understanding how you influence people or how people influence you. It's called internal locus of control and external locus. It's, this is the whole instrument here, 15 odd questions, right? Go look it up on the internet, run this on yourself, and then read the de description at the bottom as to how to look at yourself, okay? Now, I want to give you a little story about this. I, uh, anybody who's been in my office, and there are a few people here that have, will have heard me tell you this. Here's a great trick to do. Go out today, walk around, and forget the people you know, don't include them in this, the people you don't know, look them straight in the eye and say, good morning, good afternoon, how are you? And see how they react. Okay? One of two things is going to happen. One of three things. The first is what? They're going to look down and just ignore you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know who that crazy person is. <laughs> that English accent, but I don't know who that is. Number two, they're going to look at you. Okay. You know, just knowledge that you will say something, right? And number three is they're genuinely going to look you back and say, good morning, how are you today? Yes? Yes. Now think of this. How do people see you when you walk down the car? Do you look down and ignore them? Is that what you do? Do you look at them genuinely every time and say, hi, how are you? Yes? yes. Do you take time out to talk to them? As a manager and a leader, that's your job. You want to understand who those people are because as you understand them, they will help you understand yourself. Really important. And here's the trick. Today, go home to your family and be in an awful mood. <laughs> Terrible. Walk in there, throw your bag down, don't break your computer. I didn't say that. <laughs> throw your bag down, be miserable. Do that the whole evening. What do you think is going to happen in the household? Yes, They're going to start avoiding you, first of all. It's like, oh, <laughs> hard day today. <laughs> then tomorrow, go in with the best attitude possible. Best attitude possible. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> now, you know that if your attitude and your behavior change, you can change things around you, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to make those changes. You have to make those things happen. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go a little faster here. These are the things that make a good leader. I'll read them really quickly. <laughs> Lead with a purpose. Set the vision to others. Tell them what your vision is. Remember we talked about Apple? That was a vision, right? And sometimes the visions are crazy. But if you don't set them, you're not, you're not setting the bar, right? Grow and challenge the people around you. It's very important to you. Give them an assignment, stretch assignments. People don't want to do stretch assignments. I'm telling you that right now. Even when I give my own staff stretch assignments, 
They hate it. I can see the smiles and the shaking heads going, oh yeah, they don't like that. But you know what? It's important because it grows them, pushes them out. Teddy did a great job with helping us with the plane pool. And, and he said to me, I want to do something. I want to step out and do something. I said, dude, you're doing the right thing, right? We talked about it. Fantastic. Philanthropy is a great way of going out there, meeting new people, getting your name out there, showing who you're worth, what you're worth. Right? Yes. Support the people even when they make mistakes. Do you not make mistakes? Okay. I make mistakes all the time. My staff come in here. I've had somebody come in my office crying because they made a mistake and I sat her down and I said, uh, her name's B. I said, B. 300 transactions you did this month, you got one wrong. I'll take it every day to the bank. <laughs> right? I said, bye. <laughs> one mistake out of 300? Fantastic job. Relate to the people around you. Spend some time with them. Talk to them. They're really important. Mentor as many people as you can. And then believe in the people around you. Believe in them. Don't do lip service. Right? Oh, yeah. How are you today? And then you start doing something else. Right? Take some time. Listen to them. Don't let this happen. I've run out of time, so I'm going to be very, very quick here. Negative voices in your head. Don't let them derail you. We all have negative voices. Everybody has negative voices. Derail. Ignore them. You are better than you realize. You're here right now. That tells you a lot about yourself. You want to grow, you want to change. Right? Yeah. Okay. We'll skip that one altogether. <laughs> Final thoughts. My proudest moments ever, and I'll tell you something, if you think I'm lying, ask anybody who sat with me and, and they'll tell you. My proudest moments are when people come to me tell me that they accomplished their vision. Proudest moments in my life. I'll be sitting somewhere with my wife and somebody will come running up and say, oh, la, 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 la. I can't even remember their name. Right? Because it's been such a long time. But, you know, you, you're sitting there, you're going, man, I changed somebody's life. Best, best feeling ever. Make sure that you go out there and look at the bottom. Whose life can you change today? Because it's in everybody's hand right now to go out there and change someone's life. Even walking down the corridor, giving them a big smile, will change somebody's attitude for the day. Go out and do it. Thank you.